What is up everyone? I hope you're doing well. This is Made with Matt and today we're back with another tutorial where we're going to be building out a to-do list. Now a to-do list is a really great way to get comfortable with React Native because it's going to teach you a lot of really important things. If we move on to the key learnings here, first off you're going to learn how to set up dependencies for a React Native project and notably we'll be using Expo instead of Create React Native which is what we've been doing before. Secondly, you'll learn how to create beautiful front ends using views, text, touchable opacity, things like that. How to pass props, which is really important, and how to manage state, which is even more important. So without further ado, let's jump into it. In the Figma file you'll find in the description below, you'll see that I have a section here for commands. So the first thing you'll want to do if you don't have Expo installed already is run this command here. Now this is going to install the Expo CLI for you. And once you're done that, you're going to run this second command to create our project. So here I have my empty VS Code terminal. I'll paste that in, click enter. Now here we're going to select a blank template. So just click enter and it'll set it up for us. Once the project is all set up, we see it here. We're going to go CD to do list. And now we could just make sure that we're in the right directory and we'll say expo start. Now what's really cool about Expo is it's going to open up the browser and it's going to show us a QR code here. If you scan your QR code using your camera on your phone and you have the Expo app installed, you'll be able to run your app on your phone. In my case, since I want to show you guys what I'm doing, I'll click I to open the iOS simulator. Cool. So the app has loaded and we have it here on the right and it says open up app.js to start working on your app. So if we open up app.js and we change this to hello world save that we could see a change so we know that we're in business so if we jump back to our figma file here we know that the first key learning is to set up dependencies which we just did with expo and if we had more we could just type them in here now the second part is how to create beautiful front ends so we'll be building this out so let's get started by deleting everything in these views in app.js and deleting these two lines from the container styles. Save that. Now we'll get started by building out this today's task section. And to do that, we'll create a comment here saying today's tasks. And in here, we'll create a view. Now this view is going to have a style of styles.task wrapper. And in here, we'll have a text component, which will be today's tasks. Now let's give this a style of styles dot section title. Now that's going to take care of the title here, but to contain all these rows or items, I guess you could call them, we're going to need a view or a container to contain all of them. So that's why we'll create a view here. And this one will give it a style of styles dot items and that's going to hold all the items and in here we'll put a comment here for now but we'll say this is where the tasks will go so let's get started with all these styles so i'm holding down the option key to select multiple at once paste them in here now we'll get started with the actual container itself so we'll leave flex as one and change the background color to the background color of our design. It's going to be this here. Now, if you've seen my other videos, you've seen that I usually make a uh, colors file in the assets folder, but for simplicity today, since this is a beginner tutorial, I'll just be adding it here. Now we could see that the background color has changed and we can move on to the tasks wrapper. So here we'll want some padding or margin on the top. In our case now, I'll make it some padding just because we'll have to implement a scroll view later and it'll make more sense with padding once we do so. We also want some horizontal padding and I always like to put 20 on the sides. And to do this, by the way, I'm holding down the option key and hovering with my cursor. I'll put 20. Now, if we save that, we'll see that come down. So let me close this terminal. So now for the actual title, We'll check here and we'll see that it's a font size of 24 and it is bold. So font size 24 and font weight will be bold. Save that. Already looking much better. 
Now we don't have anything in the items, so let's go fix that. So we could write the code here for each task, but we want to create a reusable component, which will be this one here, um, that we could then pass in, let's say a message, and it could show it as this card item. So to do that, that's when we get into the notion of reusable components in React Native. And to build one, you'll create a new folder here called components, where we're gonna store this component. So you'll create a new file and we'll call it task.js. Now, this component is going to be what's highlighted in blue here. So to get started, like any regular React Native component, we'll import React. And we're also going to import some basics from React Native. From React Native. And we'll get started with our functional component. Oops. So here we're going to want to return um, a view. And for now, we'll just put a text item in it that says this is a task. Now we'll create the style sheet. Actually, before we do that, let's export the task so that we could then import it in our app file. And in here, we'll create const styles is equal to stylesheet.create. And we'll start with, actually, we'll come back and do that later. So let's save that. Let's go to app.js and up here, like that we'll want to import task from and this is where we say where to find it so we'll want it in components and task now let's add one here so now since we created this component we can use it like any other component like the view or text so if we add one here we should see it show up right there but what's cool is if we add a bunch more we could see the exact same component show up a million times. So what this means is if we could pass some information into task, so into this file, then we could display it here. And that's exactly what we'll do. So for example, if I want to pass in, whoops, if I want to pass in the text of, let's say, task one, and on the second one, I'll pass in task of, or sorry, text of task two. So now it's not going to do anything, but if we go to task and we say that it takes in props because that's what we're passing in here, this is a prop, then here we could go props.text, save that, and we'll see task one and two. So this means that we could pass in our to-do item as this message here as text and get it in text here from the prop. So that goes into our third key learning of passing props to reusable components. But let's not get our, ahead of ourselves. Let's finish up the UI for this one before getting started with the props. So we'll have a view. We'll give this one a style of styles.item. In here, we'll have another view. Oops. This one's going to have a style of styles dot and we'll give this one item left. So this is going to be the items here. Within here, we saw that we have this little rectangle and or sorry, the square and this text. So we'll create a touchable opacity, which is going to be going to be that square style styles dot square close that and we'll also have the text item which is going to have props dot text and it's going to have a style as well styles dot item text now if we jump outside of this view we'll have one more view here which is going to be empty and it's going to hold this circular item so we'll give this one a style styles dot circular. So if we scroll down here, we'll copy all of these, paste them in. Now 
and get started with the item. So the item, we know it's going to have a background color of white from the Figma mockup. We'll also give it some padding. So in here, we'll see that there's basically a padding of 15 all the way around. So padding of 15, some border radius as well to make it look nice and rounded of 10. Well, we could save that now to see what it looks like. Already starting to look good. Um, let's do this item left real quick before coming back to this. So the item, or sorry, the, the square instead. So we know that the square is going to be the square here with a fixed width of 24 and height of 24. We also know that it's going to have a color. So background color like so, and opacity of 0.4, which is 40%. Now, if we save that, we're going to see it here. And we will jump back to item, or sorry, to item left to see how we could align these like we have them here. So to do that, we'll say flex direction of row. We'll align items in the center and we'll have a flex wrap of wrap. And what this flex wrap is gonna do is if it gets too long, it's just gonna wrap to the next line. Now for the actual item itself, we'll also have flex direction of row. We'll also align the items in the center so everything looks good and justify, whoops, and justify the content as space between. Now we'll give it some margin at the bottom as well. We'll give it 20 so that they space off. But basically what this justify content space between will do is when we add this item here, it's gonna push the left side and the right side to opposite ends. Now we'll move back down to the square and we could see that it's not actually working for the opacity. And I think the reason for that is because it is a touchable opacity. Let's change this to a view. And now we could see that it changes to the color we want it to be. Now we'll add a border radius to this as well of five. Save that, you can see it kind of looks a bit more circular. And now if we wanna push these text items to the right, we'll give it a margin right of 15 and we'll save that. Awesome. So moving on to the text, we'll tell it that we want a max width of 80%. Now, if we don't do that, then if the text gets too long, it's gonna end up pushing this off the screen. So we're kind of limiting it in this little square. And now for the circular item here, which is this little guy, we'll have it as a width of 12, a height of 12 as well, a border color of this here, a border width of two, I believe, which you can see here and a border radius of five as well. We could save that and we see it appears on the right. Now jumping back to app.js, if we go to styles.items, here we'll add a bit of margin to the top. So we'll give this 30 and we'll make it look a bit better. So that's it for this video. Great job guys, we got the task to show and we learned how to use reusable components create beautiful front ends and set up dependencies. In the next video, we're gonna learn how to manage the state by adding in the functionality for these buttons here to write a new task and to add it so that it shows up in this list. And then when we click on these cards, we delete the item. So stay tuned for that.